guys, NickMock007 here again. So it has been a very long time since I've posted a video. Um, I've been watching all of yours for sure, though. And real quick, I wanted to say thanks to everybody who chimed in um, with advice for that sick Harlequin Reservoir that I had. Um, I spent hours um, researching, trying to help the little guy out, but unfortunately he did not make it. Um, he's the first fish that I've lost in this tank, and it definitely got me down a little bit. Um, not going to really dwell on that today, but anyways, wanted to say thanks. So, I definitely enjoy my own tank, and, um, you know, unless I'm really working on a major project or doing some big updates, um, I, I don't want to just post videos um, with logs and updates on my tank. There are far more interesting and beautiful tanks out there on YouTube, so I'm going to leave that up to the more experienced guys out there. But, well, mostly I might make a self-indulgent video every now and then, but anyways. Uh, today I wanted to start a mini-series on water chemistry. Um, specifically chlorine, chloramine, uh, water conditioners, dechlorinators. You know, so I know everybody out there uses a water conditioner, and if that's all you care about, you know, if that's the end of the story for you, you can stop watching now. But if you've ever asked yourself, how is it that adding a few drops of liquid you know, can cause this deadly chemical to become perfectly safe for our aquariums, uh, hang out with me for a few minutes, and uh, I'm going to do my best to explain um, how chlorine, chloramine, and these dechloramine dechlorinators work. Excuse me. Uh, so, in this first part, let's look at chlorine and chloramine. In the next couple parts, I think I'm going to do three parts. Uh, I'm going to look at um, toxicity and safety issues in the next one, and then dechlorination uh, and water conditioning in that last one. Um, specifically, how do these chemicals, these things we put into our tank, actually uh, work. Now, I'm going to try to make these uh, segments pretty brief, try not to make them overly boring. But today we are going to start with a little bit of basic chemistry and then move on to those other, hopefully, slightly more interesting topics. Um, but if you're in this hobby, then uh, I think they probably are interesting to you. So, I'm also going to try to post some links in the description. Um, so if you want to read more about it, uh, you'll have that option as well. Now, a little bit of basic information to get started. Chlorine was a disinfectant traditionally put into uh, municipal water systems, but in recent years, many cities have been switching over to chloramine for a few reasons. It lasts longer, so it provides a disinfectant action in supply pipes where chlorine would typically lose its capacity to disinfect. Uh, it also does not react with organics as readily as chlorine. Now the benefit of this is that chlorinated organics can be extremely toxic to people, which would explain why the folks in charge of keeping our water clean and safe would be switching over to chloramine. Now here's the problem for us fish keepers. Dealing with chloramine in tap water is not as easy as dealing with chlorine. Now, chlorine in tap water can be eliminated simply by letting it gas out. You know, all you have to do is let the water sit for a few days prior to using it. But chloramine, you cannot eliminate with simple steps like that. You actually have to take active steps. So, alright, before we get any further in our discussion of chloramine, let's take one step back and get to the main point of today's talk. The chemistry lesson. So, let's start with... What is chlorine? Well, chlorine, or Cl2, is a greenish gas at room temperature. Uh, it's still used to disinfect uh, in some water supplies, and it's also used to make chloramine, which we'll discuss in a bit. Now, when dissolved in water, it forms dissolved Cl2, and it also reacts with water to form hypochlorous acid and hydrochloric acid. Now, these acids also disassociate into hydrogen, chloride, and hypochlorite. Uh, with the extent of that disassociation depending on pH. All right, everybody with me? Any questions? No? Excellent, let's go. So, since chlorine and hypochlorous acid as well as hypochlorite are in equilibrium with the water, it doesn't really matter which one is added to attain a disinfectant medium. So, for example, you can add chlorine gas, hypochlorous acid, or hypochlorite. It doesn't really matter. You'll get similar results. So, because of that, many water supplies actually choose to use sodium hypochlorite, which is a kind of bleach, uh, in order to provide this same uh, hypochlorite as in the primary disinfectant. Okay, try not to get too technical, but hopefully that makes sense so far. Now, enough on chlorine. Again, going to keep it basic. Uh, what is chloramine? Because this is probably uh, what most of us are dealing with in our waters these days. So, chloramine is formed through the reaction of dissolved chlorine gas, uh, forming hypochlorous acid, and ammonia in tap water. Now, chloramine is a term that actually describes several related compounds, uh, monochloride, uh, excuse me, monochloramine, 
dichloramine and trichloramine. I'm um, going to put up some figures and equations down here. Now, the predominant form in most water supplies, unless your water is really acidic, is going to be monochloramine, so that's what I'm really going to focus on. But your local water supply may contain mixtures of these compounds, all three of them, and the exact proportion um, are going to depend on the pH and the relative concentrations of chlorine and ammonia. So additionally, how much chloramine used by your water supply can vary. Uh, low levels could be around 0.5 parts per million, um, whereas the EPA allows a maximum of 4 parts per million, which if you do the math is 8 times as much. Um, and of course the amount that you'll actually see at your tap will vary depending on the distance from the treatment plant and how long the water has been sitting in the pipes. Alright, so I think I'm going to cut this off uh, for part one. Uh, I know I'm trying to keep it very brief, um, and I don't want it to run longer than this or nobody's going to watch. I wouldn't either. So in the next part I'm going to talk about the toxicity of these compounds, and then finally, like I say, we'll talk about how dechlorinators actually work. Um, I hope everyone's having a great weekend so far, and uh, please, please post comments. Um, I'm going to try to address any questions um, in my upcoming videos. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please take a fraction of a second to hit the like button. Um, and look, and if you did not enjoy this video, uh, please hit the dislike button, but, but better yet, uh, actually leave me a comment letting me know why. So, thanks, and I'll see you guys in the next one.